Uh, right, guys. The next one to discuss is full join. You have just seen inner join, which gives you the common data. Only the common rows, which are there in both left table and right table, will be reflected by inner join. When it comes to outer join, as you can see, the yellow portion is nothing but the union over here. So, if you are aware of the basic set theory terms, you will understand that this is called as intersection and this is called as union, right? So, for inner join, we are looking at the intersection of the data, the common data, and for outer join, we are looking at the entire union. Union means either present in left table or present in right table. If you are present in both, it's okay. Right. So, this is the kind of data that the full outer join will reflect once you join the table using full outer join or full join. Right. So, let's take an example. Let me explain it slightly more deeply. Now, there is a table 1 and there is a table 2. Same two tables that you have taken. Right. So, ID, A, Gender, Salary, City, data id name department manager and the corresponding data now full join says that i'll join all those rows look at the id because id is the one which is common right so i'll in the combined table i'll take the union of the data present in the ids that is union of 201 234 and similarly 24 11 and 12 union means if there is an id which is present either in table 1 or in table 2 irrespective of whether it's common or not i'll take that so 201 is there, 202 is there, 3 is there, 4 is there, similarly 11 and 12 are there. So, all this, the entire data gets reflected over here. Now, if you look at it, the moment I run full join, SQL has decided that I'm going to run for all these rows. So, there are 4 rows over here, 4 rows over here, the union generates 6 rows over here as compared to only 2 rows which was generated in the inner join, right? Now, I start moving what kind of data should I put in. Now, for 201, 2, 3 and 4, a gender data which I want is present, isn't it? This data is present. So, this data will automatically come in the combined table. But there is a problem. The problem is 211 and 212 is not present in table 1 and hence their age and gender is not known. But as the nature of the join goes, full join will put in uh, 211 and 212 in the combined table as well. So, what will come over here in these cells? Answer to that question is null. SQL will put null values over there because SQL will indicate that I do not have this data. You asked for this. Okay, I've given you, I've combined the tables for you, but this data I don't know. So, I'm just putting null over there. Similarly, 201 is not present in this table. So, for department and manager, 201 is not present over here, right? So, what will happen with 201? It will still show null values for department and manager. For 201, age and gender was present in table 1. So, reflected, but department manager was not there for table 2 and hence it's null. But 202 being a common row will have both the type of data that is age and gender data and at the same time the data of department and managers. So, that will come over here. Similarly, for 203, again, if you have guessed it already, great. Null values will come because 203 is not present in this particular table. But 204 is definitely present and hence finance and atul will get reflected over here. So, the common data gets completely reflected over here. The data which is not common in any one of the two tables which exclusively belongs to either table 1 or table 2 will definitely miss on something because there will be some of the other data which will be missed for certain rows over here. I hope you are getting my point, right? So, similarly, 211 and 212 absolutely present in table 2. So, for department and manager, I have their data and hence this Achar Raj Amar will come over here and hence the combined table gets completed. So, the combined table will still have some null values because those values, that information is not there at all, all right? So, what can SQL do, right? Apart from putting in the null values over there. And that is one of the disadvantages of using full join or left join, the same things will happen, right join as well. This is one of the disadvantages that if I combine, okay, I get the combined table, but I do not get the entire data because it's not present for simple reason. Let's revise the uh, syntax quickly and then we move on to SQL. Okay, as we know, this is common for both of us, I um, mean, so for all of us, that select column names from table one, type of join, which in this case will come out to be full join, table two. Right, this is what we need to do. This is the first thing that we need to take care of. Input the common column condition. Then we go for the common column condition. That is on table one dot common column should be equal to table two dot com common column. For example, in the previous case, it will be table one dot ID is equal to table two dot ID on table one dot ID, table two dot ID should be equal to each other. Now, this is what the syntax will be, right? And we'll be using this in SQL. Let's see how. 